Well, this is different. Isn't it? Isn't different good? Praise God, you're still here. There's a hunger stirring in God's people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm still not satisfied. Boy, I just want more of him. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise the name of the Lord. Never lose sight. One touch from the Holy Spirit can change a life. Never forget it. And we are carriers of the very manifested presence of God. Isn't that awesome that God manifests himself through his vessels? Isn't it incredible that the Holy Spirit has taken up residence on the inside of us? And it's so powerful. We don't serve some impotent God. We are carriers of the very presence of God himself. Man, thank you for that, Lord. Wow. The Bible says it's the same power that raised Christ from the dead is living in a well on the inside of me. Whew. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Man, that's awesome. Whew, hallelujah. That messes me up. What do you think of when you think of Moses? Or as Damien says, Moises? What do you think of when you think of Moses? Leadership, law, redeemed, ooh. Red Sea, leader. I've been on this guy one thing for weeks now, and I just can't get past it. You know, we all have really four stages in our life. Our past, our search, our encounter with God. And our future. Isn't that awesome? Our past, our search, our encounter with God, and our future. An encounter with God changes everything. I'm just going to tell you this man's past briefly. And then we're going to close. I'm going to be very, very brief, I promise. This man grew up in Egypt. The children of Israel were slaves. And there was a law that went out that the male boys would be killed. And his mother had this idea. She put pitch and bitumen on a basket and put him in this basket and floated him in the Nile to try to hide him so to save his life. And then the Pharaoh's daughter herself sees this baby nestled in the reeds on the Nile. And she picks him up. And Moses' sister was there. And she said, hey, do you want me to fetch one of the... Hebrew women to nurse this child and she said that's a great idea and she took him back to Moses' mother and Moses' mother actually Moses' mother actually I love my buddy uh, actually nursed him until he was grown just a little bit and then Pharaoh's daughter took Moses as her own son so this is really an interesting dynamic of a way to grow up. You know, I guarantee you he wasn't fully accepted by the Hebrews. And here's why. He's growing up in a palace while they're growing up in slavery. You know, that's a distinction. He grew up, he wasn't really fully accepted by the Hebrews, even though he was one. And he certainly wasn't fully accepted by the Egyptians, even though he was one. He grew up in the palace with Pharaoh's daughter as his, quote, mother. So he already has an identity crisis growing up. You know, that's not something unique to the world. Everybody in the world seems to have an identity crisis today. Nobody knows who they are. And Moses, you can certainly see that in his life. 
Well, when he had grown up in verse 11 of chapter 2, Moses had grown up. He went out to his people, it says. There's his people. They're being mistreated by an Egyptian taskmaster, slave driver. And Moses sees himself as, these are my people. So he kills the slave master, and he hides the body in the sand. You know, like a hero. You would think that would be an incredible thing to do. So now he's got an identity crisis. Now he's added murder to his rap sheet. And you can see this man is already a mess. The next day he goes out and there's two Hebrews going at it. One one against the other. And Moses says, what are you doing? You're brothers. And they make a snide comment and said, what are you talking about? Are you going to kill us like you did the Egyptian? Moses realizes that he was found out that he was a murderer, and it made him afraid. So Moses goes for a run, and it's a long run. And Moses finds himself, really, if you think about it, I know you might not be able to relate to this story because you didn't grow up in slavery, you didn't kill somebody, hopefully, But if you did, God is gracious. Maybe, but you have a life. You have a past, do you not? And our past, although it might not lead us to a physical one, it always leads us to a desert place. Our past will lead us to a desert place every single time. Moses runs out and hides in the desert because he didn't want to be found out. He didn't want somebody to capture him and kill him. Actually, actually, Pharaoh found out about it. He got angry. But Moses was hiding. He fled towards Midian. So you've got this man with an extreme identity crisis. You've got a man that is a murderer. And now the man is a fugitive. And he's living in the desert. And one question is going through his mind. Who am I and why am I here? <coughs> Is that not a question that's permeated our minds in life? And a lot of times there's a lot of factors in there that try to answer that question for us. Who am I? See, there's people sitting here in a church in security and freedom here in Marshall County in America today, and you're asking that same question. Who am I? And how did I get to this place? Let me tell you, sin can take you to some places that you never thought that you would go. I always say it takes you where you don't want to go. You'll stay a lot longer than you wanted to, and it'll cost you a lot more than you ever wanted to spend. That's the power of sin. And sin left unharnessed, it can destroy a life. Here's this man in an identity crisis in the middle of a desert wondering Who am I? Desert places. Man, they're not fun. But guess what? God lives in the desert. There's never a desert that we get to that God is not there. There's never a place that we can run that he's not already there ahead of us. Moses thought he was running away from everything, going to live a life in the witness protection plan. That didn't work out too good. And he finds himself in a desert. See, this is the leader. This is the great conqueror of Egypt that led Israel out of bondage triumphantly. This is the guy that stood in the face of Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. You like that, don't you? This is the guy. This is the guy that spoke to the rock, that hit the rock, and water came out. This is the guy that went up on the mountain and saw God and communed with God and got the law, got the tablets. This is the guy. This is the guy. But that's not the man we're talking about today. We're talking about a murderer and a fugitive with an identity crisis that wasn't accepted by anyone that thought he was alone. Out in the middle of a desert. Next week, 
come by and see how we get from the desert into the place of victory. You like that, don't you? Stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel. Next week, I'm going to tell you how a man in the middle of a desert in an identity crisis with an incredibly terrible past, God finds him and changes his life with one encounter with his very presence. And that same presence is alive and well in the earth today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the presence of God. We thank you, Lord. We welcomed you, and you certainly did come in this place today. Lord, we are believing. Seal the works that you did at this altar today. Seal the works you're doing in our hearts even now. Lord, and just create an expectancy and a hunger in your people this week, Lord. Lord, we want you to manifest yourself every single day in our life, and we make room for you to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, I told you I'd keep my word. I love you guys, and we'll see you next week at 10 o'clock.